HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have sights and sounds from the second annual Keep Smiling for Abby Field Hockey Fundraiser. A Hopkinton High School graduate from this past June is heading to the Marines and Courtney will get you up to date with everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. But first, the Hopkinton Police Department hosted their second annual National Night Out. For the second straight year, the Hopkinton Police Department took part in National Night Out. The night is intended to bring local communities closer with their local police departments. Attendees of National Night Out got a tour of the local police cruisers, as well as enjoyed food and games and got a closer glimpse of the hard work involved to protect and serve the community. Yeah, second annual, great success, had a great crowd here. A little nervous about the storm at first, but... Uh... You know, it cleared up and we actually saw a rainbow out in the sky, so it was very nice. But uh, obviously we're bringing the community together in the essence of crime prevention. And uh, we brought a lot of, of our partners, the DA's office. Obviously we have the uh, K-9 from Holliston and uh, a lot of good information uh, at hand at different booths. So people can, uh, you know, just be prepared for crime, but at the same time have a good time and enjoy themselves. And I think we've done that tonight. And it's certainly a good way to uh, network with the uh, community's police department and learn a few things about what they do as well. Yeah, and it's good, you know, uh, our office is always out in the community, but it's good for uh, everybody to get together like this and get a better understanding of what we do, who we are, and uh, just build up that relationship between the community and the police. Uh, throughout the country, this is going on, and that's why a lot of times... Uh, you got to stop planning early if you want to get resources like a K-9 or... Uh, we're supposed to get the Mass State Police helicopter tonight, but I think it was grounded because of the, uh, the weather. But uh, you got to get early on the list for that because every, everybody in town is asking for the helicopter. <laughs> but, yeah, it's a national, national thing. I did it before for many years in Woonsocket, and I was glad to bring uh, the idea here to Hopkinton. And uh, the community has really responded well to it. All right, terrific. Now on a side note, I know it didn't rain much here today, but a few tornado warnings around the area, and we did get a uh, glimpse of, of the rain uh, and, and some hail. Was there any calls about the hail or anything like that? Well, we had uh, you know several alerts nowadays with the cell phones and all our weather apps that we have at the police department, which a lot of people do. Yeah, we saw the tornado warnings and the hail, and we did get a little hail, but like I said, we just kept our fingers crossed and... Uh, because the burgers are already thawing out. <laughs> and there's my main man right there, Steve Buckley. <laughs> you guys are in there. Are you? Okay, good. All right, See, so we couldn't do it without this guy. Yeah, <laughs> Chief Lee, great time with the department. He's been with us over a year now. Things are going great. Um, without his support, and let's support all the townspeople there for our second annual National Night Out. It's been a huge success again. We're just building a partnership with the community. Um, we just want to say to the people out there, um, you know, it's a great partnership. You see something out there, say something in the neighborhoods. So, you know, when you got if it's, if you don't feel it's right, give us a call. Um, us working together, is, like I said, the partnership. Uh, we're looking to move forward and bring some great programs to the town. Keep everybody safe. Thank you. Right. Well, good job. Right, a lot safe. of hard work by uh, Steve. So Thanks, we certainly Chief. appreciate it. Sergeant Scott Van Ralton of the Hopkinton Police Department showed off some gear used by the regional SWAT team. We don't want to put it on. I just want to see like. Oh, so it's just a clear. You don't have anything like it no. looked black. No, this is and then this is just a screw on. For your oxygen? Yeah, so we breathe. This is what basically filters out everything that we breathe in. And how long does this last? Um I mean if we go through tear gas, I probably would replace it. So just like one usage? Yeah. And, and is this like you can talk and they can hear you? So this this makes you sound like Dark Vader. Yeah, that's what I thought. And then we can also um, you can plug in our radio system right. so that we can talk with it to on. each other yeah but not like 
you can hear out just like you can hear each other. Right. So that, that's what these are. I mean, they look like earmuffs, but they're at, and they're all hooked into the radio system. And then um, we can. Do talk you have to, to like hit anything, or is it just like on? No, we have like a, a push to talk mm. button that is connected to the vest. Great. So that. Um, this would be a good workout thing. You just can't if you're if you're running. Yeah. You can't get the oxygen you want because mm. it's going through a filter. Yeah. So okay. So. Um, so even though you're, you're like trying to get if a we're bigger standing breath. here talking, you're fine. Yeah. But if you run after something, like you just want to rip it off because yeah. it's it's you're not getting as much air as you want. That's sweet. One of the favorite parts of the night was the canine demonstration by Officer Matt Stone of the Holliston Police Department and his canine companion Cash. During the first Friday of every month, local military veterans meet at the Hopkinton Senior Center for breakfast. This month at the breakfast, they welcomed Hopkinton native and soon-to-be Marine Thomas Shambo. Thomas started training in the eighth grade in which he did a five-week summer boot camp. He was also a three-sport athlete at Hopkinton High School and has been training throughout the summer to get ready for the 13-week boot camp in Paris Island, South Carolina. At the breakfast, some local Marine veterans had some advice to offer Mr. Shambo about Paris Island, and HCAM News talked with the soon-to-be Marine. They were, they were, they, they were kind. I think it's very important that you realize a young, young man going to Paris Island that he remember that to say yes sir to no matter who it is. Yes sir. I just told him to keep in mind when things get tough, you think you can't make it, thousands of guys went ahead of you and they made it and you'll make it. Good luck. So hi, I'm Mike Whalen, uh, another Marine here today at breakfast and had the pleasure of reconnecting with Tom Shambo who's uh, enlisted in the Marines and going in uh, next week. Uh, when it came time to give him some advice, all I could think of was the day I left for Paris Island and uh, that day I went into Boston and uh, flew down south, stopped at a couple of airports along the way. And uh, I had a lot of confidence, so when I got to the airports, I went over to the bar and had a couple of drinks, bought some cigars. A long trip ensued, and by the time I got to Paris Island on the bus, I was sitting in the back of the bus, half awake, half asleep, puffing on a cigar, when this, this man, the biggest man I ever saw in my life, showed up at the head of the bus and encouraged us to get off as quickly as possible. Needless to say, it was uh, quite the shock to my system, and uh, I found my way to the yellow footprints. So my advice to Tom was just uh, keep it clean on the way down there and give yourself a break. Thanks. Uh, what made you want to become a Marine? Well, my mom was Navy, my grandfather was Army. Uh, I did a lot of camps when I was a kid to military camps to get ready and I did Army and Navy and neither one felt right. And I don't know, the Marine Corps offered a certain challenge that I wanted to overcome. Alright, now you leave for Paris Island on August 17th. You excited for it? Oh yes. Yeah, I can't wait to leave. I read that you were attracted to the Marines because of a Marine motto and it reads, every Marine is a rifleman. What does that motto mean to you and what attracted you to it? Well, what it means to me is that, you know, every Marine is trained the same way. Uh, we all go through infantry training, and even though, you know, I'm an aircraft mechanic, I can still pick up my rifle and jump in with any other Marine. 
um, you know, because we're all trained the same way. And uh, the reason I like the model so much is I was on a rifle team for a year, and I grew up with a rifle, so, you know. Uh, what made you want to be an aircraft mechanic? Uh, I didn't really get to choose that job. Uh, the way the Marine Corps works is um, you take a test called the ASVAB, and it's an aptitude test, and based on your scores, you can choose certain categories of what you can apply for. Uh, I chose my top three categories, and they gave me aircraft mechanic. All right. I understand you did a lot of preparation already for the Marines, uh, starting back all the way in the eighth grade, in which you attended a five-week summer boot camp and leadership program in Kentucky. Uh, could you talk about the preparations you have done so far, and at what age did you know you wanted to be in the military? Uh, I knew I wanted to be in the military, uh, I don't know, when I was five. Started off very young. My mom came into school and would talk about the military and it kind of sparked it, I guess. The preparation I've gone through is a five week uh, boot camp and leadership course down in Kentucky. Uh, I spent a year with the Sea Cadets out of Boston. Um, and with them, I spent two weeks in Virginia doing their boot camp. Uh, I was a three sport athlete up until my junior year. Uh, my senior year I didn't wrestle, but I still played football and lacrosse, so I was pretty active my whole high school career. Uh, this past summer I've been doing a lot of running, pull-ups, and sit-ups, trying to get ready. You feel like you're ready? Yes, as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> now, uh, how old were you when you decided that you wanted to be a Marine? Um, I would say it was after I got out of the Sea Cadets, which was around my sophomore year. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much, and best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Coming up next on HCAM News, we have scenes from a successful Keep Smiling for Abby fundraiser as they hosted their second annual field hockey event. And Courtney will get you up to date with our HCAM insider. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here and we have greyhounds, but we also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time. Just uh, give it a ring. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Keep Smiling for Abby organization was created in honor of Abby Benford, who at the age of 15 passed away from an anaphylactic shock. Keep Smiling for Abby was set up by Abby's father, Stephen Benford, to raise awareness and research ways to detect anaphylaxis early. For the second year, Keep Smiling for Abby pulled together Hiller's alumni, current Hiller's field hockey players, community members, and parents to participate in a very successful field hockey fundraiser. Yeah, this is the second annual uh, Hopkinton field hockey fundraiser. Last year we, we kicked this off. My daughter Abby passed away from an anaphylactic reaction in December of 13. She was a field hockey player in Hopkinton. Uh, the field hockey program has embraced uh, a fundraising platform for us and we're excited to, to put on a little alumni game for the uh, alumni and varsity program. Uh, we're going to start the day off with an with a, a exhibition game between parents of the uh, varsity players, parents of the program, and some community leaders. We've got elected officials, police and fire department, uh, some, some business leaders in town. Uh, that we're going to do a little brief exhibition match with an oversized ball, have some fun out there, and really sort of bring the community together for a day. Uh, to raise some funding for our, our cause, our primary cause is to stop anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is, a, uh, is an allergic reaction that, uh, that, that could be potentially life-threatening if not treated early. Our primary goal is to keep smiling for Abby Foundation 
are to fund research into uh, early detection of anaphylaxis, uh, and our thoughts there are to fund research into a technology solution that senses the reaction early on and triggers the medication called epinephrine, uh, and then at the same time simultaneously alerting uh, uh, emergency responders. Uh, very often with anaphylaxis, the patient doesn't realize they're, they're having a life-threatening attack, and what happens is that they, they just can't have difficulty breathing like a normal asthma attack, and, and uh, they, they let it progress too far to the point where they can't stop it with epinephrine. So again, our goal is to, to fund research into a technology solution that gives those patients an early warning. We also do awareness programs and we fund two scholarships here in Hopkinton uh, for graduating seniors. Oh, it's a great atmosphere. Last year we had about 300 people. We're projecting about 350. The field's set up. We got tents and, and a raffle item going on. It's a beautiful afternoon. We got some nice cloud cover here to take the heat off the, the players. Um, we're going to serve some pulled pork and, and shredded chicken uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, some great food. Uh, we have Dell's Lemonade here providing some refreshments. Uh, it's just a great overall family day uh, for the field hockey program. All right, and uh, any predictions on, and as far as who's going to uh, take the win today? Uh, well, that's, that's difficult to, uh, to predict that. Last year, the community team won uh, on, a, on a stretch goal by Evan Bishop, the principal of the high school. The, uh, the parents team this year has strong, strong athletic presence with uh, Jody Dolan, uh, one of the parents of the program, and, and my wife, Amy Benford. Uh, uh, here she is right here. Amy's right here. She's, uh, she's playing again this year. She gave up the, the winning goal last year to the other team. That's she not sort of stumbled. why I came on camera. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I think that the parents will show well today. Um, and then the, the varsity, varsity alumni game will be hard fought. The, the varsity girls have been practicing. Uh, the alumni, a uh, couple of state champions on the alumni team. Last year they won two to nothing, but I think, I think we'll have a good spirited competition. I've never held one of these things. I'm thinking I'll use it like a, a nine iron on the golf course without a big backswing. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, getting out there. I know nothing about field hockey, but I heard they're using a rubber ball, so that makes it easier. Now, um, have you had any kind of uh, experience? Did you practice at all for this today? Never, I play hockey, so I don't know how to use this thing. We'll figure it out as we go. All right, uh, great cause. Uh, people are gathered here uh, today. Can you talk a little bit about the cause? Yeah, I mean, my uh, obviously all the kids know about Abby and what happened. And um, Stephen Bedford, I think, put this together a couple years ago and um, asked me as a community leader to participate, and I'm happy to do so. Just so many good friends and people that I know around here. So it's great to see events like this bring the community together and help out with the cause. The afternoon of the Keep Smiling for Abby fundraiser featured two very close and competitive field hockey games. The first Keep Smiling for Abby field hockey game put the parents of the players up against community members, while the second game put Hillers alumni versus current Hillers field hockey players. Here are the highlights from two very successful and entertaining field hockey matches. In game one, it was two 10-minute halves as the community took on the parents, the community struck for a goal in the first half. Abby Jones assisted while Matt Sacklad put in the goal. The parents, however, came up with a goal of their own in the second half. Mary Pelgrin put it in the right side after an assist from Patty Zeff. The well fought out match ended in a 1-1 tie after it was time for current Hillers players to take on Hillers alumni. I understand an intense field hockey game out there today. Are you girls ready to go? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. It's exciting. But I'm a little nervous. The team, the alumni are really good. So we're playing for Abby, who is um, our friend or teammate who passed away from anaphylaxis. And it's good to be everyone here, see everyone here, just like 
together and having fun and just remembering her and raising awareness and raising for money. For a good cause. Yeah, for a good cause. Now, how's the rivalry going to be out there today? Is it going to be intense? It is. Last year it was intense. It was definitely a lot more intense than the parent game out there. Yeah, so I think it's going to be hard, but we better It'll win. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. I want that trophy. <laughs> Have you uh, been practicing a lot for this? This past week, uh, we've been we went, practicing. We went to Bruce Street the weekend last weekend. That's about it. All right, so have you girls been practicing a lot for this event today? Can't no. say we have been. <laughs> the last time we played was last year's yep. game. And we won, by the <laughs> way. But well, we're confident we're going to win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, has there been um, any team uh, get-togethers to get ready for the big day today? Uh, no, but there might be an after party. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, there you go. All right, there so. is an after party. <laughs> so this is kicking it off. <laughs> Can you talk about the uh, event today and uh, why everyone is gathered up here? Yeah, we're playing um, for a fundraiser to benefit Abby Benford. Um, she was on the field hockey team. So we're all here to support her and her family and the cause and have fun. And keep smiling. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, now how's the rivalry going to be out there? Is it going to be intense? Yes, oh, yeah. my yes. sister's on the opposing team, so there will be a lot of <laughs> competition. <Yeah. laughs> All right, uh, do you think you girls are going to be able to take the game today? Definitely. I think Definitely, we yeah. We're That's out of shape because we were in college, but I think we can pull through. <laughs> and are you still playing field hockey in college? No, no. no. We actually graduated college. I know. <laughs> Oh, okay. So we feel pretty old, but it's not going to keep us from winning. All right, so it should be an intense game out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Go awesome. alumni. Any, any score predictions? Um, 3 nothing. Yeah. Us. 4-1. Us. I was going to say 3-2. I brought extra mouth. What? <laughs> no way there's a Yeah, no, goals. that's not going to happen. And it didn't happen. The score prediction might have been wrong, but the alumni come out on top as with about 16 minutes left in the second half, some terrific passing and an assist by Sarah Kennedy led to the Elizabeth Keith goal. That would be the only goal of the game as the alumni took the one nothing victory and the cup. It was a great time. <laughs> All right, awesome, and uh, it looked, uh, oh, it looked oh, also competitive out there. Were oh, you yeah. uh, happy you were able to get the win? Yes, we are. Second year in a row. <laughs> and many more to come. <laughs> All right, take us through that goal. Uh, <laughs> well, I kind of like blanked, and I got a little nervous when I saw the ball coming to me. Sarah hit it in, and it just went off my stick into the net. <laughs> the second annual Keep Smiling for Abby field hockey event was a success and helped raise $20,000 in the fight against anaphylaxis. For more information, go to keepsmilingforabby.org. Be on the lookout for the full field hockey games from the Keep Smiling for Abby fundraiser, airing soon on HCAM. For more on what's coming up on the HCAM channels, we turn things over to our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, August 15th at 5.30 p.m., get ready to dance as the Glamour Girls perform popular dance hits from the 40s to today on a new Concerts on the Common. On Tuesday, August 18th at 6.25 p.m., Enter Stage Left Theatre turns The Taming of the Shrew on its head as the women must now woo the men. On a new ESBC update on Wednesday, August 19th at 7 p.m., Mike Shepard and Rob Nickerson discuss the next stages of the building process now that the schematics have been approved. In order to plan for the next phase, which is after the, the, the budget and schedule agreement, um, we're going to have to actually have a design design. Uh, the, the, probably the same architectural firm will take the schematic design, uh, which is just as I described, and they'll do a store-bought set of plans. And on HCAM Ed, we bring you the second annual Keep Smiling for Abby field hockey fundraiser, where parents and alumni take on the current team players. Have you heard? There's a new way to sign up for the HCAM Insider now, and you can also sign up to receive our daily news updates. Just head on over to hcam.tv slash news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. 
Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well.